Welcome to video 4 for week 11. In the previous video, I gave the definitions and the ideas of Markov chains, stochastic matrices, probability graphs. Here I want to talk about a very specific example to make the material from video 3 a little bit more concrete. <clears throat> so I want to talk about games of chance. And I'm going to choose a very simple game. We could model much more complicated games, but I want to choose something simple to start with so that it's clear how the Markov chain is working. So this is a game of chance with multiple rounds, and each round you have a winning or losing percentage. Uh, think of it as a coin flip uh, with a possibly weighted coin. So there's nothing more complicated about that, no input from the player, you just either win or lose with a certain probability each round. I'm going to set this up with a system of stakes. So a stake is how much you are essentially betting on this game, and you start with one, two, or three stakes, and if you win or you lose, you go up or down one stake. And if you get to zero stakes, you finish. And if you get to four stakes, you finish. Zero stakes, of course, being you've lost. Four stakes is you've won, and that's your ending condition. From each of the intermediate places, if you were at one, two, or three stakes, you have a losing percentage to go down, and you have a winning percentage to go up. And these have to add up to one, of course, to make this a probability situation. That game gives us this stochastic matrix. Well, L is the probability of losing, and W is the probability of winning. Again, each column adds up to one because L plus W is equal to one. And then if we were at zero or we at four, we stay there. Let me start with a perfectly fair game. So the winning and losing percentage here is 0.5 to win, 0.5 to lose. This is in fact not an irreducible matrix, so we can't use the strong form of Perrin Frobenius. We do have a dominant eigenvalue of one, that's true for all stochastic matrices, but we have more than one eigenvector. I have an eigenvector, two linearly independent eigenvectors here, and these sort of make sense. V1 is the eigenvector that you've lost the game, you're at zero stakes, and you can't continue playing, so you just stay there, probability one. V2 is the eigenvector where you've won the game, you got to four and you stopped and nothing else happens. So it makes sense there are two linearly independent situations here, because there are two possible outcomes and both of these are stable situations. So instead of analyzing the eigenvectors, I just want to analyze what happens when I take the matrix and play the game some number of times. That's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to play the game 20 times, taking the matrix action 20 times on starting values with one stake, two stakes, and three stakes. So the difference here is the place I'm starting. So I'm starting with probability one with only one stake, probability one having two stakes, probability one having three stakes. And then I get outcomes by acting 20 times, so basically playing 20 rounds of the game, and seeing what the outcoming probabilities are. In each of these cases, the middle probabilities are very slow, very low. I'm almost certain to be finished the game. There's a 0.01% chance that I'm still playing. And then I can look at what happens. If I start with one stake, I've got roughly 75% chance that I'm winning, roughly, or that I'm losing, roughly 25% chance that I'm winning. That makes sense. I only start with one out of four, so winning three times all the way to get up to here. I mean, I might, might go back and forth in the middle, but it's relatively unlikely. It's more likely that I end up losing and going down to zero. So 75, 25, that makes sense. If I start in the middle with two stakes, roughly 50%, roughly 50% to win or lose, it's a perfectly fair game. Again, that makes sense. If I start with three stakes, I'm only 25% to lose and 75% to win. That also makes sense. All right, that's a perfectly fair game. What happens now if I change these coefficients a little bit? Let me look at the effect of making the game unfair on the winning and losing percentages. So now I've changed the winning and losing percentages by 0 0.2, 0 0.02. So instead of losing 50% of the time, I lose 52% of the time, and I win 48% of the time. And again, I'm playing 20 times on a starting condition of one stake, two stakes, and three stakes. And I want to see what the effect is on the outcoming probabilities. Again, there's only a 0.1% chance that I'm still in playing the game, so I've almost certainly finished the game. And then I can look at the outcomes. Here I have about a 78% chance of losing and a 22% chance of winning. So this 0.2 adjustment in the fairness of the game is going to give me, uh, oh, sorry, 0 0.02 adjustment is going to give me a 3% change in the actual outcome. So there's a bit of an exaggeration. Changing the fairness by 2% means I'm actually 3% more likely to lose. 
If I start with one, with two stakes in the middle, then here I have a sort of 54% chance, roughly speaking, of losing, and a 46% chance of winning. There it's a little bit more exaggerated, so a 2% uh, change in the winning percentage of each round is going to lead to about a 4% change in the total winning percentage after I finish playing the game. And then I can look at what happens if I start with three stakes and then something similar here, 28% chance that I've lost and 72% chance that I've won. Again, a slightly exaggerated impact, a two, changing the winning percentage of each round by 2% changes the final percentages by about 3%. Let me make this more severe. So now I have a 65% chance of losing each round and only a 35% chance of winning each round. So that's a 15% change in the individual winning percentages of each round compared to the fair game. If I start with one stake, I'm now 92% to lose. So that's a 17% change because I started with 75 to lose. Um, and I'm only 8% to win. Starting with two stakes in sort of the middle, I'm now 77, 78% to lose, 22, 20, um, 23% to win. So that's quite a substantial change. Again, there's an exaggeration that the adjustment to the winning percentage here is exaggerated in the final outcome. Makes sense because it's repeated. If I start with three stakes, I'm still actually not likely to win, even though I'm so near my winning condition. I'm actually more likely, slightly more likely to lose even though I'm starting with three stakes. And this is the way that I can sort of analyze this particular game of chance. And this is meant to be a sort of an introductory model to show you that we can analyze games mathematically with something like a Markov chain, looking at where the probabilities are going. This is part of a whole branch of mathematics called game theory, which does this kind of analysis, tries to see where certain probabilities are going, how to make decisions, what the probability of certain outcomes are. I want to do one more thing with this particular example, and this is a piece of mathematics that's known as the gambler's ruin. And I'll, I'll give the reason for that name at the end of this little explanation. So I want to go back to the fair game. So here are the percentages of the fair game, and I want to start with two stakes. So this is right in the middle between zero and four, and I have a 50% chance of losing, a 50% chance of winning. It's a perfectly fair game. Everything is balanced. So now what I want to do is I want to change my stopping condition. So here, my stopping condition is the last part of the state. I stop at four stakes. Well, what happens if I stop at five stakes instead? So now that gives me a six by six matrix. So now I have zero, one, two, three, four, five. And I don't stop until I get to five. And I still start with two. So I'm ch not changing my starting position. In the previous slide, everything was fair. I had 50% chance to win, 50% chance to lose. By moving my stopping condition, the game is still perfectly fair. These winning and losing percentages for each round are perfectly fair. My overall outcome is now 59% to lose and only 39% to win. So by changing my stopping condition, I've fairly dramatically dropped my winning percentage, even though the game in each round is still perfectly fair. And I can keep going. So that's stopping at five. What about stopping at six? So again, the game is perfectly fair, but I now have an extra entry, I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 6 states. I still start with 2. And again, my losing percentage has jumped again quite a bit now to 66%. And my winning percentage has dropped to something like 33%. And what I can see with this is if I keep my same starting position of having two stakes, and I keep increasing the ending condition, then what's going to happen is my losing percentage is going to keep increase, increasing and my winning percentage is going to keep decreasing. And in the limit, if I have no stopping condition, then this percentage is going to grow to 1 and this percentage is going to grow to 0. And this is called the gambler's ruin because it says if you play a perfectly fair game, this is a fair game, each, each coin toss has an equal chance of winning or losing, but if you play a perfectly fair game long enough, you will eventually lose with probability zero, assuming that there is no stopping condition. And in the limit, that's what the limit means. There is no stopping condition, which is a really interesting kind of game theory result. The game is ostensibly fair, but you're still guaranteed to lose. And this is the kind of thing that happens in game theory that is, is really quite interesting 
and leads to lots of questions about what mathematics is trying to say, whether mathematics is anything to say about moral behavior and human choices. And I'm not going to get too deeply into that this video, I'll leave that as a thing for you to talk about. But I wanted to get to this conclusion, which I think is a really clever little conclusion, a little mathematical proof that if you play a perfectly fair game long enough, you will still lose with probability 1 if you don't have a stopping condition.